so sick of reality TV. Good morning, everybody. It's Rita Smith, the number one food fairy, and um, today's a really special day because I'm going to be sharing uh, my recipe for salsa verde, green salsa, which you often find in restaurants served with uh, alongside red salsa. I prefer the green. My family prefers the green. Um, lots of cooks make them with tomatillos. I much prefer to make them with green tomatoes. I find tomatillos have a bit of a bitter aftertaste that I do not enjoy. Um, green tomatoes are fantastic, fat, crunchy, um, perfect, perfect vegetables to work with at the end of August, packed full of vitamin C. Um, and uh, they make a perfect salsa verde. So I'm gonna be using green tomatoes. I picked these up at prices yesterday. I asked for them at 11 o'clock. They ran out into the field to pick them, and by 11.30 they were in the trunk of my car. So uh, they couldn't be fresher, and they're perfect in every way. So there's gonna be green tomatoes, tons of them. I bought a bushel. This is half of the bushel. Um, uh, there's gonna be onions, lots of onion. There's going to be garlic, tons of garlic, more than this. I'm going to go buy more. I might buy some fresh as well, just to give it that kick. There's going to be jalapeno peppers. Um, I might not use all these jalapenos, but um, once I get the whole bushel full of tomatoes on the stove, I might. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's a lot of jalapenos. Um, the secret ingredient is cumin. It really lends a distinctive flavor to the salsa that I get compliments on all the time. And when people say, what is that flavor? What is that flavor? That flavor is cumin, okay? Um, so we'll use tons of cumin, probably more than this, actually. Um, and I'm going to, when I start the tomatoes cooking, I'm going to splash some vinegar in the pan, maybe an inch of vinegar, just to make sure that the tomatoes don't stick or scorch. So um, there we have it. We've got tomatoes, onions, garlic, salt, cumin, a little bit of vinegar, jalapeno peppers, and then of course thyme. This is going to cook for hours overnight, you know, at least 24 hours, maybe 36 or 48. We'll see how it goes. Um, we'll be back with uh, Salsa Verde. So just to get started here, I wanted to show you how I uh, process the green tomatoes. I do not even... I don't even cut the belly button out. Um, the color of that and the texture of that completely goes away in cooking. Um, so there's, there is nothing to do to the green tomato, but I cut it into quarters. I guess if you were super lazy and optimistic, you wouldn't even do that, but that allows you to get a lot more tomato into the pan. So I'm gonna proceed to empty this whole sink of tomatoes, pour some vinegar into the bottom of the pan, about an inch. Put it on the stove at between two to three uh, with a lid on it so that I can allow it to start to simmer and then you'll see the tomatoes will start to reduce, um, liquefy. They don't totally liquefy but they'll begin to reduce and you can fit a lot more into the pan uh, once they begin cooking down. I guess that's the phrase we would use, cooking down. Okay, so that's all it takes to, <laughs> that's it. Look how much work that is and these are so good. So crunchy and perfect. They're just perfect. They're just perfect. It's like a perfect thing that God made and put on the planet just for us. It's amazing. You can fry them. You can make mincemeat out of them. They're so full of vitamin C. Green tomatoes. Here we are with um, the biggest Paderno stock pot that I own. I think it's the biggest one that they make. I know uh, commercial places have bigger. But the biggest Paderno stock pot that I own, it is filled to the top with nothing but quartered green tomatoes. I'm gonna put the temperature on the stove to three. I'm gonna give it a good slug of vinegar. Okay, that's enough vinegar to make sure that nothing um, uh, sticks or scorches. It also gives a bit of a tang to the recipe. And I'm gonna put a lid on it to allow it to uh, begin to simmer, to keep enough heat in. So it'll begin to simmer. You won't believe how much these will cook down. Like, you'll be shocked. Um, and when they do cook down, then I will be able to put in the onions, the jalapenos, the cumin, and so forth. Right now, all we got going on are green tomatoes. And they're going to sit there for hours. I'm going to say like three or four hours before I can do anything else with it. So this is an ideal project to be doing when you're getting paid to write other stuff. Okay, so here we are. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. These have been cooking since, ooh, 9 or 10 o'clock this morning, 4 or 5 hours. Um, it took them 2 to 3 hours just to kind of become liquidy. Now they're actually cooking down and reducing. 
And as you can see, I have um, room in the pot now for the onions, the garlic, and the jalapenos. And if there's more room, I'll add more green tomatoes. The belly button from the um, top of the tomatoes, I just threw them right in there. But you'll see when I take the stick blender to it and add the cumin, yeah, they just disappear. They just melt away. So uh, we're going to let this keep cooking. When I come back, I'll have onions, jalapeno, garlic, and cumin to add to the green tomatoes and possibly some more green tomatoes as well. They smell really good. All right. Happy Friday evening. I'm so happy. It's Friday night. I'm ready for a Friday night. Um, this green tomato pot has been cooking for since 10 o'clock this morning. It's 6.30, so it has been cooking for eight and a half hours. Um, yeah, eight and a half hours, and it's down to less than half. There's nothing been added to it, but the vinegar, I started it with to prevent scorching and a bit of salt. So I'm going to chop up the onions and the jalapenos, but because I can do this quickly and simply right now, I'm going to add the garlic, and I'm going to add this entire jar of garlic. There's probably going to be uh, more green tomatoes in the pan before I'm finished as well. I'm just going to rinse that out with a little bit of vinegar because that doesn't hurt at all. A little bit of extra vinegar won't hurt just to get the garlic out of the pan, out of the jar. And um, I am also going to add an entire package of cumin. Okay, there you go. Ooh, that's everything that was in that jar. Okay. Um, and I'm going to add I, I, here, a full, how many grams is this? 68 gram package of cumin from ARZ. Oh my God, their spices are so fresh. This smells amazing. Johanna Smith is going to go nuts when she smells this. Okay, an entire jar of garlic, an entire package of cumin. I'm pretty sure I can tell you there will be more of both before I'm finished. But that's where we are for right now. So I'm going to give this a stir. Oh my God, it smells so good. The cumin smells so good. I'm going to give it a stir and uh, let it kind of uh, continue cooking. And I will chop up the onions and the jalapenos. And uh, those will go in here too with uh, as many green uh, tomatoes as it takes to fill the pot. Okay, we'll be back. Oh my God, everybody's going to love this. Okay, um, the green tomatoes are simmering away. I added an entire jar of garlic and an entire envelope of cumin. Um, I am in the process of chopping two giant onions. They're big ones, and I'm going to use the full onion. Okay, so two big onions are going to go into the pot before I get around to the jalapenos. So I've decided to add 10 jalapenos to my pot of green uh, salsa, salsa verde. Um, because I am gonna blend the entire pot with a stick blender, it'll be pureed, um, there isn't any need for me to do anything other than cut the little mouse tails off. If I was using these in a different recipe, um, I could cut them in half if I wanted to, I guess they'd cook faster. But um, I'm not gonna grind them or chop them. But what I am going to do while I'm touching jalapenos is I'm going to wear gloves, okay? When you cut jalapenos or scotch bonnet peppers or um, any of the other really hot pepper varieties, you need to wear gloves because, honest to gosh, your fingertips will burn for days, your palms will burn for days. If you touch your finger to your eye, it'll be a nightmare, a nightmare. Um, you don't want that to happen. So while I'm working with hot peppers, uh, of any kind, including jalapenos. I'm not going to take the seeds out. I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just cutting the mouse tail off and uh, I'll chop them in half just so they cook faster. I'm going to toss them into the pan with the green tomatoes. Oh, they smell good. They smell really nice. The green tomatoes and the onions and the garlic and the cumin are on the stove cooking. But I just wanted to take the opportunity to remind you wear gloves. Okay, these are super cheap. I buy them in the box at the hardware store, $10 for, I think it's like um, 100 pairs or something. So they work out to be uh, very inexpensive per pair. And um, and what I've done, I just throw them away. You might have some of the kind that you, when you're done with them, you wash them. Um, but these are going to go into the pot with 
the green tomatoes and everything else and I have gloves on my hands so when I'm done the gloves will go in the garbage and I'll be able to touch my eyes to my face or my hands to my face or to my eyes or any other part of my body if it is required um, once you get this stuff onto your hands and it moves to other parts of your body it's excruciating so don't do it it's just quicker and easier and cheaper and uh, more comfortable to wear gloves okay and then when I'm done I take the gloves off alrighty um, so this pan which has been cooking for nine hours I've topped it up with jalapenos onions garlic probably a bit more salt cumin um, and all of the rest of the green tomatoes that were in the sink so this pan represents one half bushel of green tomatoes and um, their liquid is going to come out of the tomatoes. This whole pan is going to get much more liquidy as the evening goes on. It's on number three on my stove and um, it is easily going to cook overnight. So I won't put a lid on it. I'll let it cook. Um, I'll let the moisture escape to the air. Um, jalapenos are in there, new tomatoes are in there, and this is going to cook for the next like 12 hours. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, then I will taste it for cumin, garlic, salt, jalapeno, and every other thing, and see if it needs to be adjusted. So that's where we are right now. It is, gosh, we're going to say we're, you know, 10 hours into the process easily. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. on Saturday. This pot of uh, salsa verde has been uh, simmering since 10 a.m. I started it at 10 a.m. on Friday. Um, I added a ton more green tomatoes as it cooked down to about the halfway mark yesterday. There's a full half bushel of green tomatoes in here, just quartered, um, jalapenos and some of the other spicing. So I tasted it at 5 a.m. I let it cool in a little dish and, and ate some of it with a fork. Um, it needs more cumin. It needs more garlic and it needs more salt. So I'm going to add another full package of cumin from ARZ. They have the greatest spice selection. Um, I have got an open jar of garlic, so I'm going to use it up. In uh, That may be enough. If it turns out not to be enough, then I'll, I'll open a fresh one. But I did want to use up the one which is open. I'll rinse that out with a bit of vinegar. Um, and it definitely needs more salt. It has twice as many tomatoes as I started off with at 10 o'clock yesterday. So uh, more salt. I'm going to put all that in and stir it around. I haven't stick blended it yet. I'll get around to that later. It's too noisy for 5 a.m. to be stick blending. But we'll let this uh, continue to simmer and continue to flavor. And I'm going to go read for a while, get some work done, and maybe come back when the sun is up and uh, uh, see if this is ready to stick blend. It's not thick enough. It needs to be thicker, that's for sure. So it's going to be, it's going to be cooking for a while longer. It's on 2.5 on my stove, and it's been simmering all night. There's a red batch simmering back there as well. See you in a few minutes. We're back at um, nine o'clock, ten after nine, on Saturday morning. So this pot has been cooking for almost 24 hours. Um, at the 5 o'clock mark this morning, I added some more garlic, some more cumin, some more salt. It definitely needed more salt. Let it cook for another four hours. So I just wanted you to get a look at the color of what green salt it comes out at. By the time you add all the cumin and uh, let it cook, and it's going to cook for quite a while longer too, um, you can see from the color why I don't bother to cut the belly buttons out of the tomatoes. They're invisible to this process. Like when, when I'm done with the stick blender, you will never know that there were ever belly buttons uh, from the tomatoes put in there, um, which makes it really easy to prepare green uh, tomatoes because then all you have to do is quarter them. Okay, so everything I want to be in there is in there. Onions and garlic and jalapenos and cumin. They've cooked for 24 hours. It's all very soft and liquidy. And I'm going to use my stick blender to break up the biggest pieces of the tomato and the jalapeno and make, oh Jesus, it's hot. I'll tell you what, it's hot. Um, make uh, the salsa of a, a smooth, not a smooth consistency, but just consistent uh, in its consistency. Oh dear, that sounds like a, a political phrase. But uh, anyway, uh, we're just gonna make the largest pieces of the tomatoes and the largest pieces of the jalapeno no longer chunky um, but in fact, 
Oh, there's one right there. Got him. Uh, in fact, it'll be uh, very, not smooth, but, but of, a, of a singular consistency. It won't be lumpy. Um, it'd be nice for dipping, like really nice for dipping when people dip their chips or their vegetables into it. And um, there's still quite a lot of liquid. This could cook down, I'm gonna say, easily another two inches um, before I start to put it into jars. Okay, so you don't need to watch me do all of this, but anyway, you get the point. Um, so by the time I'm done here, you won't see any chunks of tomatoes or jalapenos. It'll all be a kind of a nice thick consistency and uh, thick enough for me to put in jars and to serve to guests. Here I am at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. So this has been cooking for almost 36 hours. Uh, certainly a good full day and a half. Um, I stick blended it to make it smooth. It's very dark as you can see because of all the cooking and all the cumin and um, you know, the brown, the caramelizing of the onions and the tomatoes and so forth. Um, this is not a canning video. This is a cooking video. Uh, I will um, do a canning video later. But in the meantime, Bernardin um, has great uh, videos on their website. But just to let you know, this is how the, um, this is how the um, salsa verde looks. It, oh my God, it smells so good. I tasted it. It's, it tastes so good. This is how it is at the end of the process, about a day and a half, let's say 36 hours. I'm putting it in jars right now. I'm processing them in the canning kettle and you'll see them at the end. And if you come to my house, you'll see them at a party and uh, it's delicious. And uh, be confident in the kitchen. I hope you have a ton of fun making things like this. Everybody seems to um, gobble them up when I make them. I can't really get past how uh, how people love homemade food. I, gosh, does nobody cook from homemade anymore? Because when I make this stuff and send it out, it just, uh, at, the girl at Prices told me we are all hovered over the table, scooping, scooping it into our mouths like hogs. And I, I said, gosh, I don't know if that's a compliment. <laughs> I'm shocked that this was the last time you had something homemade that tasted so good. But anyway, be confident in the kitchen you know, try it out, use some recipes, uh, add cumin, add salt, add tomatoes, do your best. And if it doesn't turn out great, then, you know, you'll pitch it and you'll wash the jars and start over again. So uh, anyway, Rita Smith, number one food fairy saying, have lots of fun and be confident in the kitchen. Sick of